breaking news on the valley today. Two Fargo girls go missing and police want your help in tracking them down. Plus, Planned Parenthood has a backup plan for abortion services in the FM Metro should the U.S. Supreme Court overturn Roe v. Wade. Also ahead on this Tuesday morning, detecting watered down gas in your tank. The damage can cost you big time. And we should finally see some temperatures near average today. But this morning right now, we're enjoying that nice sunrise. Take a look up there in Devil's Lake. Summer Schnellbach has your forecast on this Tuesday, May 24th, 2022. The Valley Today starts right now. This is the Valley Today. We're following local breaking news this morning. Fargo police need your help in finding two girls missing from Fargo. 13 year old Zayanya Berlin was last seen around 8 last night near her South Fargo home. She was wearing a white sweatshirt, dark pants and green croc shoes. And 12 year old Sierra Nelson was last seen at North High School yesterday around 4 in the afternoon. She had on distressed jeans, a dark red shirt and Converse shoes with gorillas on them. Contact Fargo Police or your local law enforcement if you have any information about either one. You can also submit an anonymous tip by texting the keyword Fargo PD and your tip to 847-411. New this morning, one man is being treated for life-threatening injuries following the crash of two pickups in the Central Valley. The Minnesota State Patrol says both drivers were heading south on Highway 59 near Bijou in Monoman County yesterday when they crashed side to side. 74-year-old Ordell Kerfman of Faustin was rushed to a Fargo hospital. 26-year-old Whitney Reed of Solway, Minnesota was not hurt. There is no indication if either driver was ticketed for that crash. Also new this morning, we are just now getting some first pictures coming in of what some storm chasers are calling a monster tornado in Texas. Look at your screen right now. That's just huge. It barreled through the town of Morton yesterday, which is near the Texas Panhandle. People are cleaning up, but there is no word yet on any official damage estimates in that area. In our neck of the woods this morning, thankfully, much calmer. Actually, a beautiful sunrise we have out there. Summer Schnabach has your forecast. Morning, Summer. Good morning, and thank you so much, Jordan. Does it get much better than this? A vibrant, bright sunrise of just a few clouds in the sky. It's a great start to our Tuesday. Hopefully, it'll put you in a good mood to start today. And temperatures are near seasonal waking up today. 47 in Fargo and Grand Forks right now. 40 in Jamestown, 45 Bemidji, 48 in Fergus Falls and Devil's Lake. Getting the kids ready for school today. I'm sure just a couple more days left of school if they're not already done. Uh, temperatures will be around the low 50s by the 8 o'clock hour and heading home from school. Temperatures will be warming up into those mid and upper 60s. So maybe don't need the larger jacket like the last couple of days when temperatures were in the 30s and we had frost. Sunrise this morning was at 543 here in Fargo. For the rest of your day after you step out the door, temperatures will be quickly warming into the 50s to near 60 degrees right by that lunchtime hour. So a great day to head outside for your lunch plans. Soak up some sunshine because later in the afternoon we will have a couple of clouds developing. We might have a sprinkle or two, but overall a very quiet day. Now look at this beautiful lilacs in bloom. Thank you to our very own Valley Today producer Julie Holgate in South Moorhead for sending this one in. And it's a great day to get out and do some gardening. Temperatures a touch warmer than we were yesterday. We're looking at mid to upper 60s. Maybe a few locations warming up into the 70s. So how does the rest of our week look for gardening today? Awesome picture perfect tomorrow for most it'll be fine in our North Dakota counties, but for Minnesota a few light rain showers and cooler temperatures in the 50s and 60s Thursday another great day temperatures warming up into the 70s with just a few sprinkles left over in the afternoon overall a great week to finally get out in the gardens and get some things planted for the season. Yeah, I finally did some yard work yesterday. I have to say I I know yesterday we were still not even quite at average, but I was shorts and t-shirt. Oh yeah, I was too. I was I took my book out on the deck soaking up the sun felt amazing. Yeah, we're just used to it being so cold. Even <laughs> uh, not even average feels great. <laughs> right. All right, Summer, thank you this morning. Now 604 Planned Parenthood says it will add abortion services at its Moorhead Clinic if the Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade and Fargo's abortion clinic is forced to close. The Red River Women's Clinic in downtown Fargo is North Dakota's only abortion provider. The owner has indicated that the clinic would move to Moorhead if it's necessary. 
A Grafton High School coach is facing criminal charges for an incident back on May 12th. Brent Baldwin is charged with felony theft and a misdemeanor driving charge. He's the assistant coach for the boys basketball team. The Mapleton Fire Chief has changed her plea to guilty in a DUI case involving a serious injury. Court documents say that Kayla Cross was involved in a West Fargo crash around 2 a.m. last November 13th. The plea deal has her paying a $500 fine. Cross previously served as an assistant fire chief in Moorhead. Jury selection continues this morning in the case of a man accused of opening fire at a Fargo bar. 43-year-old Brandon Grant is charged with three counts of attempted murder and three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for allegedly shooting at people at the Bismarck Tavern last summer. Video from the bar shows a man approach Grant with a phone before that man punched Grant multiple times. Multiple people joined the fight before it was broken up by bar staff. Documents say Grant pulled out a handgun and shot three men while they were being escorted out of the bar. Police say they recovered 13 bullets. We have an update on a story that we first told you about last week about people getting bad gas at a couple of FM Metro stations. The owner of Johnson's Auto Repair says he has had a lot of customers with tainted fuel in their tank. Dennis Johnson says cleaning it up is a big job that can cost you thousands of dollars. He says while most drivers just trust that their gas is good, there are some warning signs. Most of the time you'll get um, engine performance, rough idle. Uh, your engine light can co come on and, and start flashing because of misfires and too much water will just pretty much shut her down. The Consumer Protection Division at North Dakota's Attorney General's Office says they have received four complaints of water and gas from the same gas station so far. May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month, and with the UV index getting stronger, it's time to break out that sunscreen. The Valley Today's J.C. Dodd joins us live with how to best protect ourselves from the most common cancer in the country. Good morning, J.C. Good morning, Jordan. I'm here at Island Park Pool. Um, seven days from today, so this time next week, this pool will be open for business and the rest of the pools around Fargo for the summer and it feels like it could not come here soon enough but with pool time and sunshine comes an increased risk for those terrible sunburns i know we all have probably gotten a bad sunburn in our lifetime and we don't want to do it again but also an increased risk of skin cancer and like you mentioned jordan may is skin cancer awareness month and it starts with protection this summer now um, is the perfect time it's the perfect month to start becoming aware of what you can do to protect yourself. So start reaching for the sunscreen. Now I spoke with a Fargo dermatologist, Dr. Rachel Ness with Fargo Center for Dermatology, and she says sunscreen should not be your first line of defense. So when you and Summer were talking about getting outside, um, just because you have sunscreen on doesn't mean you're 100% going to be protected because it's all in the application. You've got to make sure you're applying it thick enough and um, frequent enough. It's every two hours. It has to be reapplied to make sure you're getting the most efficacy from that sunscreen. She also says make sure you're reaching for SPF of 30 to 50. Anywhere in that range is good for protection, but again, all in the application. Um, she really stressed um, relying on shade. Right now I'm standing under a beautiful tree, which we're still having the sunrise right now, but standing under a beautiful tree, that can make a huge difference. And having a floppy hat, a very fashionable floppy hat, can help protect your face and your shoulders. Just make sure you are um, protecting your skin because like Jordan said, skin cancer is the most common form of cancer in the country. Now, this is what Dr. Ness said about what she's seeing here in the Red River Valley in, form, in terms of skin cancer. Last week, we actually had an afternoon where we added on three cases of melanomas. So we had seen them all three the week before, just as patients for unrelated issues. All three had suspicious lesions. We took them off, they were melanomas. So with that increase um, that she's seeing of melanomas, they can be, if not caught early, they can be deadly, lethal. Um, skin cancer is very common and preventative. That is a big point, Jordan, that um, grabbing that sunscreen can make a difference, but also wearing long layers, wearing, I know in the summer we want to shed all of our layers that we've been wearing all winter, but make sure you're covering your shoulders, your forearms um, with clothes because that makes a huge difference. And also avoiding the tanning bed. She says that's a big thing she's seeing with young adults is um, those that were tanning at a younger age have an increased risk of melanoma. So coming up, Jordan, I'm going to talk about um, how you can know when you need to go get some skin, um, your skin checked out, your moles. It's all as simple as following the alphabet.
All right, we'll check in on that and see what those tips are coming up here on the Valley today. JC Dodd reporting live near downtown. Thank you. We are starting off fairly mild to cool this morning. Beautiful sunrise. See it behind me there. You also saw it when JC was talking. We should heat up nicely though as we head through the day. Summer Schnellbach lets us know how close we get to simply average in the Red River Valley.